когда кто-то оказывает кому-то черную неблагодарность, то люди с совестью стыдятся этого и, может быть, даже засыпают с трудом. Вот те люди, которые сейчас занимаются руководством Федеративной Республики Германии, такого, такого ощущения, такого чувства. У вас нет ощущения, что Германия э, демонстрирует черную неблагодарность по отношению к Москве? Ведь именно благодаря Москве э, восточная и западная Германия тогда смогли объединиться. А сейчас? Можно это так назвать. Но беда в том, что э, ощущают, вот, когда кто-то оказывает кому-то черную неблагодарность, то люди с совестью стыдятся этого и, может быть, даже засыпают с трудом. Вот те люди, которые сейчас занимаются руководством Федеративной Республики Германии, такого, такого ощущения, такого чувства. The defense of democracy package that has 200 NGOs ringing alarm bells because of the threat it poses to civil society. And the crowning irony of this is that this package from the Commission of Ursula von der Leyen, a person elevated to power without a single vote from the citizens, who has spent the last two months swooping in and overriding the foreign policies of elected governments all to cheerlead a brutal apartheid regime that she calls a vibrant democracy as it pulverizes a city of children. Well, my God, with defenders of democracy like that, I think I speak for many, many citizens of Europe when I say, nein danke, no thanks, Frau Jen. <laughs> The United States stands completely isolated globally for supporting Israel in this massacre. And the consequences of that are being felt all over the world in shifting alliances, in economic patterns, uh, in changing geopolitical structures, uh, even in uh, the use of the dollar as currency and many other things. Uh, there is a massive, a seismic change of geopolitics underway in which the U.S. has chosen nearly total isolation in the world. I don't think Americans really understand what is motivating the Israelis. I don't think Americans understand the risk of this war widening very significantly, very dangerously, and very fast. But this is what we're up against. And unfortunately, we have a president who's not effectively a president. I don't know what he is, but uh, it's, it's the worst foreign policy imaginable right now. You say it's the worst foreign policy imaginable. You are, of course, a student of American foreign policy. Uh, you have studied it as a, as a student and, and, and as a professor and, and teacher and diplomat. And you have concluded, this is a dreadful conclusion, Professor Sachs. I agree with you. Everybody watching and listening to us now agrees with you. Mearsheimer and, and McGregor and all the others agree with you. But it's harsh. U.S. foreign policy is a scam built on corruption. Why do you say that? I've been trying to understand uh, how it is that every single uh, 
American foreign policy in the, in the last couple of decades, one could go back, but let me let me start with the year 2000, basically, has failed miserably. The U.S. said, okay, we're going to get rid of the Taliban in Afghanistan. Well, the Taliban uh, is, is there. The U.S. said, we're going to make uh, Iraq, you know, a great uh, U.S. ally. Uh, and Iraq is, a, of course, a great ally of Iran, its next door neighbor. Okay, we're going to get rid of Bashar al-Assad, the Syrian president. Well, he's there, but the U.S. CIA-led effort cost hundreds of thousands of deaths uh, in the interim. The U.S. said, we're going to make Libya uh, in our image and uh, bombed Libya in 2011 uh, and overthrew the government of Muammar Gaddafi and unleashed a uh, a war, I was going to say civil war. Well, there is a civil war in Libya, but it's a war throughout Africa now because what spilled out of Libya was armaments and jihadists and mercenaries that have spread throughout much of Central and Western Africa by now. The U.S. said, we're going to uh, overthrow uh, Yanukovych, the Ukrainian president, in February 2014, the new government's going to call for NATO enlargement. We're going to move in. That was the Biden, Sullivan, Newland plan. Uh, and what do we have? We have a war that has been raging for nine years in which uh, Ukraine is getting picked to pieces because uh, our side completely blew it. It's one failure after another absolute disaster after another, trillions of dollars down the drain, and it's the same cast of characters. And it makes you think, it's not just a lack of accountability, there's something obvious, <laughs> it's in plain sight what's happening. In a way, they're winning. They're not winning in anything that has to do with my interests or your interests, Judge, or the interests of the American people, but they've gotten the military spending and the defense-related budget up to about $1.5 trillion this year. More contracts spilling out everywhere. They got two wars going on. This is phenomenal. Can you imagine Raytheon and, and uh, Lockheed and Northrop Grumman and others? We got two wars, and maybe the wars are going to spread, in fact. And they've been able to mobilize $5 trillion over this period in failed efforts, what they're doing is getting budgets that are busting the federal government. We have a debt that is more than 100% of our gross national product now. None of these wars is paid for. None of this military spending is paid for. We're all doing it on borrowing basis right now. Yeah.